Hello and welcome to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, I will be talking about the severe weather here across the deep south into the southeast and up to the you know, east coast and northeast here as we head into our uh, week uh, this week. And then I'll be looking longer range here at a weather pattern here, a shift across the middle of the country where we'll see warmer than normal conditions across the eastern half to two-thirds of the country and cooler than normal conditions across the western half to two-thirds of the country. So welcome back everybody here. Happy Thursday and uh, hope you're doing well. We do have an enhanced risk for severe weather across portions of east central Texas into northwest Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and then a slight risk of severe weather getting up toward the western Tennessee Valley here into the, uh, the Memphis area, getting up towards the western side there of Nashville and then down toward portions there of northwestern uh, Mississippi. We do have a little bit of a tornado risk today across the mid-south here into the deep south and western Tennessee Valley. This does include Nashville, Memphis, getting down here toward the Shreveport area. You are in a 5% risk of tornadoes here in the Shreveport area. And then getting back here just to the east of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, down towards the uh, Waco area, and then the College Station area here as well. And we also have that wind risk. We have 30% wind risk here across east-central Texas, northwestern Louisiana, into southern Arkansas. And then the hail risk as well, as a line of storms will continue to push here into the deep south and along the Mississippi Delta here from east Texas and into Louisiana and Arkansas here today. We do have a lot of moisture pooling up ahead of this here line of storms with dew points in the 60s and low 70s across this area. So a lot of moisture to work with. We did have flash flood emergencies issued across portions of uh, Oklahoma last night where eight to nine plus inches of rain did fall. So a lot of rainfall across those areas here. And uh, they even had home evacuations across a couple of cities here across those areas as well. So a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, some more flooding potential here today across the deep south. So do be on the lookout for that. We do have instability here ahead of this main line that'll develop late this afternoon here into this, uh, into this evening. Uh, instability here in the east central Texas on the order of 2,000 to 3,000 joules per kilogram. A little lesser extent here into portions of Tennessee down through Mississippi on the order of you know 1,000 to 1,500, but enough for some severe weather parameter here as well. So let's walk you through this here on the composite reflectivity. You do have another line of storms kind of re-intensifying as we head into this afternoon from uh, Arkansas getting all the way down into to east central Texas near the Dallas area here some nasty storms we could have some you know damaging wind gusts some large hail maybe up to two inches in diameter and here potential for an isolated tornado or two here embedded along this line could have some supercells here developing later this afternoon and then this line will continue to kind of surge off to the east southeast here encompassing here the Shreveport area getting down closer to the College Station area and then it'll kind of get closer to the uh, coastal Texas area as we head into this evening. And then moving into Mississippi toward the Jackson area could have some stronger storms. This line will start to fall apart here as we head into the evening as the better dynamics here Kind of, uh, kind of outrunning the better dynamics in the atmosphere, but still some pretty decent storms getting into Mississippi, western and middle Tennessee toward the Nashville area, Memphis, and then getting down here towards Alexandria, Louisiana, getting down towards the New Orleans region here, maybe a couple of thunderstorms as we head into early this evening, and then coastal Texas around uh, Corpus Christi up through the Houston area do have some noisy storms with some you know frequent lightning, the small hail, and potentially even some gustier winds as we head here into the uh, evening time frame across coastal Texas. As we look into tomorrow, the Storm Prediction Center's Day 2 outlook does show a marginal to even a slight risk zone of severe weather across a very broad area across the, uh, the uh, Tennessee Valley getting into the Mid-Atlantic, also the southeast. This does cover here, you know, the Carolinas, up through southern Virginia, portions of eastern Tennessee, eastern Kentucky, southern West Virginia, and then getting down through much of Georgia and into portions of eastern and southeastern uh, Alabama and the northwest Florida Panhandle as well. Even have a marginal risk going all the way up here to southern portions of Indiana, South Central Ohio, and even as far north here as southwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, we do have a 2 to even a 5% uh, tornado risk tomorrow, mainly across most of the your southeast and east coast here, so we'll have to watch that. Higher uh, chance of a tornado of 5% across northeastern portions there of, North, Dakota, of uh, North Carolina and into southern portions there of Virginia. And then that general, you know, 15% uh, wind risk across most of the southeast and then that hail risk here as well from the Tennessee 
Tennessee Valley down into uh, Georgia, Alabama, and Northwest Florida here uh, as we head to do our Friday. A lot of moisture pooling up ahead of the here, you know, surface cold front. We'll have a cold front coming in from the west here ahead of that. Some destabilization here, some he daytime heating, a lot of instability starting to grow once again, and we could have some scattering of storms here as we head into the afternoon peak heating time frame. And I'll show you that here in just a moment on the uh, composite reflectivity. But you can see 1,000 to 1,500 uh, joules per kilogram instability generally from the Tennessee Valley and the mid uh, mid Atlantic states down here through uh, you know the Carolinas into Georgia, Northwest Florida. A little higher instability around the Northwest Florida Panhandle, maybe around 2,000, 2,500. Also up here in the portions of the eastern uh, North Carolina area. So that may enhance the tornado risk across a couple of those areas as we head into late Friday afternoon. So looking at this with the composite reflectivity, we got some scattered storms here up through the lower Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and getting down to the deep south here into the uh, Gulf Coast states. Could be some stronger storms around the Mobile area here as we head into mid-afternoon on Friday. Also some stronger storms getting up here into eastern Tennessee, eastern Kentucky. And then we'll start to see a little bit more here, you know, uh, growth of storms and scattering of storms, uh, popcorn type uh, severe weather here as we head into, uh, you know, the lower Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, and getting down here into the Georgia, the Atlanta area, and getting down here into portions of Northwest Florida around Panama City, Pensacola, those areas here um, as we head into late Friday afternoon. And then this will continue to push off to the east here into the Carolinas and Virginia as we head into the late afternoon hours, you know, the dinner time uh, time frame, and into portions here around. Savannah, Georgia, getting down toward the Columbia, South Carolina area, and then Northwest Florida Panhandle as well. And then this will continue to push off to the east here before the cold front kind of makes its way off the coast as we head into Friday night. Now, over the next two, day, two days here on today and into Friday, we will have some beneficial rains across po uh, portions here of the Ohio Valley, back into the mid uh, Mississippi Valley, and into the Mid Atlantic. Could have an, uh, you know an additional one to two plus inches of rain here, especially across Indiana, Ohio and portions here of Kentucky, even some higher totals here in the southern portions of uh, Pennsylvania, getting into uh, West Virginia, Northern Virginia, into the Maryland here, as we could have, you know, up to two inches worth of rain. And then some more rainfall with that line here on Thursday across east central Texas, southern Arkansas, into northwest uh, Louisiana, some more additional, you know, one to three inches of rain cannot be ruled out here, localized higher, uh, higher totals. But this line will continue to be progressive here as it moves to the south. So the flooding threat today is a little little lower than the here the flooding threat uh, in Oklahoma last night but still a chance for some flooding so uh, turn around don't drown do not here drive through flooded roadways as it can be very dangerous and even some you know lower totals across you know the Georgia area the Carolinas down through Mississippi Northwest Florida Panhandle still generally though a half inch to three quarters of an inch of rain can be expected across most of the southeast here as we head through the weekend so some beneficial rains for sure and due to the rainfall, especially the heavier amounts here up into the Ohio Valley, getting over toward the Mid-Atlantic, uh, uh, the Weather Prediction Center did put a day two excessive rainfall outlook out for a marginal to even a slight risk for flash flooding across these zones here from eastern Illinois through most of Indiana, Ohio, getting into most of the state here of Pennsylvania. And then you got that slight risk zone here of some flash flooding around southwestern uh, Pennsylvania, maybe around the Pittsburgh area, and then getting down here into northern uh, portions there of West Virginia far southeastern and eastern portions there of Ohio as well and parts of Maryland here as we head into our Friday. And then thereafter, I did promise a warm-up, and this is going to be coming here toward the um, second week to the middle portion here of our uh, May time frame. We do have a very high probability of, you know, well above average temperatures across most of the middle and eastern two-thirds of the country, or even really the eastern half of the country here, from the Midwest into the Great Lakes and Northeast, all the way back down here into the Central and Southern Plains, the Tennessee Valley, the Southeast, while here on the west side of the country here, the western United States, we do have uh, uh, cooler than normal temperatures likely with a trough that will kind of be digging down into the southwest as we head towards the uh, the May 10th through the May 14th time frame here um, in the Intermountain West, the Pacific Northwest, the California areas, a lot of cooler than normal conditions expected there. And even as we go further, all the way through when at least Wednesday, May 18th, we still have that you know ridge across the eastern uh, half of the country here uh, from the Ohio Valley, the northeast, all the way back down 
through the Tennessee Valley, the central southern plains, the Great Lakes region here in the southeast, while still the trough will continue here into the west here across the Intermountain West, the Pacific Northwest, the Four Corners region, maybe inching its way up here into the western plains as we head towards, you know, the third or so week here of May. And then also with that here, we do have drier than normal conditions from the, you know, the Texas area getting up through the Ohio Valley to the northeast here as we head through Saturday, uh, May 14th. Wetter than normal conditions can be expected across the northern plains getting back here into the uh, western United States, the Pacific Northwest, a little bit of a drier spell down here in the Four Corners region as well during that time frame. And then still continue to, you know, wetter conditions across the upper Midwest here in the portions of the northern plains, maybe inching its way down toward the central plains and inner mountain west here as we head through Wednesday, uh, May 18th. Some drier weather underneath that ridge potentially here into the northeast in the Ohio Valley. Maybe some wetter conditions with some thunderstorm activity across the Georgia, Carolinas, and Florida area here as we head towards, you know, through the you know, third week or so of May, and then continue dry weather across the southern United States here from Texas all the way over toward California, the Four Corners during that time frame as well. And during that time frame as well, with that ridge off the, you know, out in the middle of the country and toward the east here, we'll have that here trough continue to push off to the east here in the east coast. And we'll have this ridge start to get reestablished here in the middle of the country. This is on Sunday. Got that trough coming down here from the west. And look at the temperature anomalies. We could be from, you know, the Chicago land area down through uh, portions of Oklahoma City, Dallas, Texas. Could be on the order of, you know, 10 to 20 degrees above normal here as we head toward next month, uh, next Monday. And then up to 25 degrees degrees potentially above normal here from the Chicagoland area back through, you know, Kansas City, Missouri, uh, getting back toward the Wichita area and portions there of the Texas Panhandle as we head into Tuesday. And then that ridge will really start to amplify here up into Canada. We could have values even up into Canada here, into Ontario, Quebec. We could have up to 30 plus degrees above the norm for this time of year across those areas. And then across the Great Lakes and the portions of the Central and Southern Plains still ongoing, you know, 10, 20 plus degrees above normal to temperatures can be expected by the middle of next week. While across the west coast here from California and Nevada up through the Pacific Northwest, 10 to 20 plus degrees below normal across those areas as we head into the middle of next week as well. And then that ridge, like I said, continues to amplify as we head toward Thursday time frame here with the Great Lakes here. Uh, pretty great around here around the Great Lakes. We have, you know, 20 to 30 degrees above the normal uh, temperature wise here with the anomalies here on next Thursday with, you know, 10 to 20 plus degrees below normal across the west coast here of uh, the United States getting into the inner mountain west by next Thursday. And also during that time here, once that ridge starts to break down toward, you know, the middle portion of the month, we could have some more active weather here. We'll see how that works out. Still a lot of rainfall can be expected across the Dakotas here during that time frame. This goes all the way through, you know, the Sunday uh, the Sunday, uh, May 15th time frame, you can see some pretty decent rainfall totals across northwestern Minnesota getting down here through the Dakotas into Nebraska here. Maybe some more rainfall across the central and southern plains getting into the mid-Mississippi Valley, upper, Miss, uh, upper Midwest here in the southern Great Lakes as well. And a lot of rainfall kind of trailing off here into the uh, east coast. Uh, during that time frame. Unfortunately, still not a lot of rainfall across the Four Corners region from, you know, New Mexico, West Te far west Texas, into portions there of uh, Arizona, southern Nevada, southern and central California, or even southern Utah as well. Uh, but, uh, Hopefully we can get some rain down in those areas here as I know the drought is worsening here across those areas, especially with that heat wave starting, uh, especially in New Mexico and Texas here with that ridge, that, that drought will be worsening here, unfortunately. But do see some beneficial rains across the Seattle, Portland area, across the northwestern portions there of the country as we head through the middle of the month as well, so that it will be beneficial. So I did kind of want to give you a quick, you know, preview, a snapshot of kind of how the next, you know, week or so is going to be working out. We got a couple days here of severe weather from uh, today on uh, Friday, maybe even a marginal risk on Saturday across the southern, uh, South Dakota into portions of Nebraska, a couple isolated strong storms as well. And then I wanted to show you that warm up here as we head into next week uh, with some summer like weather across much of the eastern half of the country. So thank you for watching my video. Do be sure to like my video. Give me a nice thumbs up here. Uh, leave any of your comments, questions below. And remember to subscribe to my channel here to, uh, uh, to kind of catch the latest forecast updates here through the spring and summer months. So thank you for watching and have a great Thursday, everybody.